everybody! This is Jody Becker, and I would like to present to you the first section of a two-part series discussing how TPAC is related to the instructional design process. The purpose of this section of the presentation is to effectively connect TPAC, or technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge, to what I am learning about instructional design and some of the best practices implemented in these processes. I would like to show the results of an initial assessment I used in the form of a technology audit that I administered to a group of learners I work with on a regular basis. I will discuss the important points and possible implications of these results to show how they may affect the instructional design process. I will demonstrate the continuous need to review, approve, and redesign the instructional process with the technology audit I used as a case study. So what is TPAC? Well, TPAC is the knowledge that teachers use to integrate technology into their teaching. TPAC is the sweet spot where content, pedagogy, and technology knowledge overlap. The integration of these components creates a well-balanced and effective learning experience in and out of the classroom. An important idea concerning TPAC and the integration of it into the classroom is that technology should not drive the learning experience, rather it should complement and support the learning process. So what is instructional design? Well, instructional design is the practice of creating instructional experiences which make knowledge and skill acquisition more efficient and effective. How are some of the ways that instructors can make the learning process more efficient and effective? Well, first, the instructor must know the audience that they are teaching to and what resources they have available to them to assist and accommodate the learning process. Thus, an important part of the design process is to determine the needs of the learners so that the experience meets the end goal and objectives of the project. There are some major contributions to the field of instructional systems design, and the sweet spot where they overlap is the focal point, which is on solving educational challenges. In the TPAC model, the area where these three components overlap is where instructors can most effectively use technology to teach what they know using technology. Both of these are focused on solving educational challenges, and learning what those challenges are is a major component of both models. This is where some of the TPAC methods come into the instructional design process. A major component of effectively implementing TPAC is to determine the accessibility that the learners have to the technologies they will need in order to attend the lessons, as well as what technologies they are most familiar with prior to the learning experience. In fall of 2015, I assessed the needs of a selected group of learners. This was the part of a technology audit recommended as an initial step in implementing TPAC into the classroom. I used this audit to find out what technology was available to learners and what they used it for. This is an initial needs assessment. What I found was not what I expected. In order to meet the needs of the learners, I had to redesign instructional and supplemental materials. In some cases, this was a simple redesign of what technologies I used in order to supply learners with the appropriate information. Well, here are the results. When I finally tallied the results of the audit, I found that only three quarters of my learners had internet in their homes. I was expecting this number to be much higher. I also thought that more people would use social media, and lo and behold, only three quarters of my learners used it at all. This was interesting. I realized that not all of my learners would be able to attend online material from their homes, and that social media would not be an adequate method of communication with the group. So in the second half of this presentation, I will discuss how the result of the technology audit affected my instructional design process, how important it is to review, approve, and possibly redesign instruction based on the results of a needs assessment. In this case, it was in the form of a technology audit. 